in their ovaries. The microwaves can damage the genetic structure we now know in those ovaries. So when this young girl grows up, gets married and has children, if she has a daughter, this particular mitochondrial genetic damage is irreparable. There is nothing at all that can repair it. So if she has a daughter, the daughter will carry that genetic deformity mm. and her daughter will carry it and her daughter will carry it. So it isn't a game anymore. It isn't a little box that you can press buttons and run around and, and have fun with. We are now seriously jeopardizing the future generations for as long as there is a female line of our children's children's children. And, and that is, to me, the most scariest aspect of all of this. All right, now if you've just uh, tuned in, we're chatting to Barry Trowell, who is a retired British military intelligence scientist. For years and years he's worked in microwave and stealth warfare, and his particular expertise uh, was on the impact of this radiation on health and brain functioning. And he is here, we are chatting about microwaves, we are talking about Wi-Fi, we're talking about cell phone masts, we're talking about the damage done to vulnerable groups of people. Everyone, of course, is vulnerable, but there's some groups that are more vulnerable than the others and kids texting uh, and you know that they can spend hours and hours and hours texting bad 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 news but uh, give us a call on 830702 if you've got any questions and we'll take them right after this you're listening to jenny cruis williams on talk radio 702. 702 your number one news and talk station on 92.7 and 106 fm call jenny now on 011 883 702 all right well let's let's go to lance and lance thank you you've been holding on for quite some time and you're chatting to barry trower and you've got a question yeah i do thanks jenny Barry, I've got a question. We work in an office building. We're on the first floor. Above us is a, you know, it's a concrete uh, ceiling. Then there's another floor, and there's a concrete roof, and then there's a cellular base station on top of that. And I must be honest, I'm not entirely happy about that. I, and I'd like to. My question is really, sort of, what are the implications of that? Is that actually quite dangerous? Number one, and number two, is this something that can actually do to our ceiling, like, like literally foil it and then earth the foil, you know, something like that, to actually reduce the radiation? Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, the, the first part of your question with the transmitter on the roof, there is research from India, uh, from the professor in India from a university, that shows that people living beneath a transmitter uh, tend to suffer more neurological damage than people who do not have transmitters on their roof. In other words, you will have psychiatric problems. You will also have a reduced immune system. In other words, it could mean that you have more colds, more coughs, longer colds, longer coughs, uh, and your general health could deteriorate. Uh, that has been uh, tested experimentally and published. The second part of your question, sir, the, the second part of your question, yeah. sir, uh, is, is there something you can do to, like bursting a boil, I believe you said. Was, was that correct, sir? Uh, no, 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 no. Um, getting, putting foil, oh, tin foil oh, oh, in our room. Oh, tin foil. I thought you said, I thought you said bursting a boil. Oh, no, no. Um, no, no, like, literally like putting tin strips, you know, roll the tin yeah. foil in the roof and then earthing it, something like that. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, this can be done, sir, but not tin foil. Uh, okay. uh, tin foil actually has little microscopic holes and lets the radiation through and in fact focuses it. Uh, what you could use is aluminium tin, uh, which they use in the building industry, radiator foil, aluminium foil, the thick insulating aluminium foil, that between you and the roof, the shiny side to the roof, yeah. uh, that will reduce the radiation coming in. Okay. But, uh, Lance, on your behalf, if it reduces the radiation uh, coming in, Barry, it doesn't eliminate it, does it? So, no. so presumably, then, you are still at risk? Without a doubt, yes, but less of a risk. Okay. Lance? Um, Jen, Jen, sorry, can I, I'm, I'm at the beginning of the show. I just want to ask Barry, um, what, like, how come you're actually here in the country? 
Well, listen, I don't want to repeat everything, but he's, he's now retired. He's a retired British military intelligence scientist, and for decades he's worked in microwave and stealth warfare, and this is his area of expertise, and he's been invited to South Africa to speak. Oh, okay, cool. So okay. not the soccer. All right, oh, thank no, you. not the soccer. <laughs> Bit early for that. And um, and Joseph, why fire precautions? Yeah, thank you, Jenny and Barry. Um, good afternoon, sir. I'm, uh, good afternoon. I'm aware that a lot of research has been done on this, and there are many reports uh, concerning the harmful effects of this kind of radiation. My concern, number one, before I get to the precaution side, is that it seems like governments are resisting the actual truth on these reports because it would affect revenue that comes into them. But secondly, I'm also aware that there are precautions that certain companies have um, taken in manufacturing polymers, uh, certain polymers that can be attached to one's cell phone, to one's laptop, to one's microwave, can be inserted in um, plug points in order to minimize the harmful effects of the radiation and in fact change the frequencies so that the body actually sees them as um, healthy frequencies as opposed to harmful frequencies. Can you elaborate on that? Uh, could I ask, I'll answer the first, the, the, I was concentrating on the second. What was the first question? Sorry. The first question was the uh, government seemed to be deliber deliberately resisting <coughs> yes, okay. can I the actual yes. reports. Can I answer that part first, and then we'll come to the sure. second part? Okay. Um, when I address governments, what they don't realise um, is that there is an initial boost to the government uh, from the industry uh, putting up towers and, and paying rent and anything else that is being paid. But I, I was talking to a government just two weeks ago, and I said, can you really afford this system unregulated and I'll tell you why sir because most of the the money generated from the cell phones apart from the tax leaves the country it's estimated that uh, from the illnesses the health bill could go up as much as 40 percent in some countries and they're not prepared for that may I just finish sir the third aspect of this and this has been calculated by the Times, the, uh, uh, an editor in the Times, that the cost to the planet in uh, making the pollinating insects sick that pollinate the plants that feed the, the, the planet, the cost could be as much as 33 trillion, that's a million million, US dollars a year. So uh, when it comes to... When it comes to profit, there may be a lovely initial boost for the government, but when I address governments, I say, has your, or have your economists actually sat down and worked out the real cost of all of this? And they haven't. That's the first part of your question, sir. The second part was... Well, I've, uh, I think you've answered that in full. Let's, let's uh, move on. Uh, Ryan, you've touched on the answer that, uh, that Barry has just given about pollinating insects. And your question is about bee colony collapse disorder. Hi there, Ryan. All right, Ryan from Gallo Manor asked the question about, about bees, which are in trouble, and that, of course, is pollination. That's what we're talking I about. I could expand on that just one thing. Yes. Um, I, I've done a lot of research on bees, and, in fact, I gave a lecture just before I, I came to this country. The bees are, out of all of the insects and all of the animals that, that are affected, bees are affected worst. And the reason is, is that they are the size that the frequency of the microwaves can react with most. They have three different types of iron in their bodies that help them navigate. They use the Earth's magnetic field to navigate, but the microwaves going through the bees will remagnetize what they use for the Earth's magnetic field, so they are disorientated. And the other part, and this has been published in Nature, the, the planet's most foremost scientific journal. They have found that the bee's visual navigation system, where they use the sun, that is also affected by all microwave frequencies. So the bottom line is bees will get lost, their immune systems will suffer, 
and then eventually whatever illness they come across the varroa, the varroa, 